virtual machines are pretty cool. You can try out operating systems without a worry in the world that you might mess up your own installation. You can use programs that are not Linux or Wine compatible and to a certain extent even play games. On top of that, virtualization offers another huge security layer, because if your VM gets infected with a virus, then you are still fine. And maybe you can even restore it with a snapshot. And the best part is that you can basically do it on any Linux operating system, with a few side notes of course. But before we get into virtualization on Linux, I quickly want to remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like, and while you're at it, why not also subscribe to the channel? Thanks! Okay, so before we get into virtualization on Linux, I believe it would be best if we start off with virtualization in general. So let's start talking about something that literally any VM needs in order to run properly. A hypervisor. But what even is that? Since your computer only has a limited amount of CPU cores, RAM and storage, a hypervisor is a small program that distributes those resources as efficiently as possible. Now there are two different types of hypervisors. There are type 1 or also called bare metal hypervisors like VMware and Hyper-V which run right on top of your hardware and distribute its resources to its so-called guests. And then there are type 2 hypervisors like VirtualBox and QEMU which run on top of the so-called host operating system. Type 2 hypervisors are by design slower than type 1 hypervisors because not only is the operating system handling the distribution of resources, but the guest is also slowed down by the host if a lot of processes are running. They are also considered less stable because of that, because if the host crashes, then so are the guests. In reality though, and especially for non-productive environments like ours, the difference is real negligible. Alright, so let's talk about virtualization on Linux, because it is a bit special nowadays. If you already searched the internet for how to do it, then you often come across two terms, QEMU and KVM. Since many programs often combine these two, it often gets confusing what the actual difference is. Quick Emulator or QEMU is an emulator like VirtualBox that runs on top of your operating system, aka it's a type 2 hypervisor. QEMU handles everything from creating virtual drives to install your operating system on, turning virtual machines on and off, and also integrates your peripherals like a mouse or keyboard via its own driver. Alright, so what the heck is KVM then? Well, KVM stands for Kernel-Based Virtual Machine, and it's part of the Linux kernel. What KVM does is that it converts the kernel to a Type 1 hypervisor, which directly handles the hardware for virtual machines. So why is QEMU and KVM often used together if they are not even the same thing? Well, that's because QEMU can utilize KVM as a sort of highway directly to the hardware. And now it gets a bit confusing, since if your host operating system is now a hypervisor and QEMU would be running on top of that, with all the processes going on here, wouldn't QEMU and KVM just be a type 2 hypervisor? I mean, it sure like heck looks like it, right? The truth is, KVM is special and more like something in between. Because on a regular Linux installation with all of its programs and processes, it is technically just an optimized way to pass through the hardware to virtual machines. It basically functions like hardware acceleration on GPUs, except for virtual machines. Alright, so we could still talk a lot more about virtual disks and abstraction layers, but I think now would be the best time to just start virtualizing. First things first, if you want to get good performance or even use KVM at all, then you need to make sure that your CPU actually supports virtualization. You can do so by heading into the UFI, go to the advanced CPU settings and look out for either Intel virtualization technology if you have an Intel CPU or for SVM mode if you are on AMD. Some mainboard brands do often call these settings the same, regardless of the actual hardware behind it, so watch out for that. Don't forget to save your changes and boot up your Linux distribution. Now first we'll cover a very basic and probably the most easiest way to virtualize and then we'll move on to a more advanced solution. 
Many of you, and especially GNOME users, might already be familiar with GNOME Boxes, which is essentially the most simplistic approach to virtual machines that I have ever seen. Now I don't mean that condescending in any way, since it literally is the easiest way that basically anyone can use a virtual machine. It uses QEMU and is also KVM compatible, so it's fast and even supports 3D acceleration so that your virtual machines perform well with a user interface. In the top left corner, you can either download an operating system from a provided list or you can choose your own ISO, which you've downloaded from somewhere else prior. You can give your virtual machine a name, if supported by the ISO, choose UFI instead of BIOS and select how much RAM or disk space it is allowed to take up. QEMU does not reserve this space, but just grows dynamically to this maximum value if needed. And there, it already runs and we can begin with the installation. By the way, if you notice that your mouse is stuck within the VM, then with the hotkey Alt and Control you can free it again. If you need to configure a device in Windows for example, then you can pass it through in the preferences, though remember that it will become unusable for your host until you pass it back again. This is very important if you pass through a keyboard or a mouse, because it just won't work on the host anymore. You can also create snapshots if let's say you want to try something, I'm gonna say special, which you can always revert to. And for most operating systems you are already done and you can start to virtualize as much as you like. And of course, until your PC starts slowing down. But there are a few things that Boxes is really bad at. For once, some operating systems like Windows 11, which require a secure boot and TPM 2.0, can't be installed straight away. And also, Boxes chooses the amount of assigned CPUs by itself. So it can happen that it chooses all of your available cores, which can have a negative impact if you have several VMs as well as your host operating system running. Another thing is that some VMs that don't get recognized that well don't have the 3D acceleration option. Now since Boxes is based on QEMU and KVM, you can enable these settings. However, you can only do it by editing this XML configuration and boy. You better know what you're doing here. So for just virtualizing Windows 10 and lower, as well as macOS and most Linux distributions, Boxes will do just fine. Now let's move on to something more advanced, but also something that gives you way more control over the settings. Now there are many different solutions to choose from, but I personally like to use Virtual Machine Manager, which is still open source and also features a nice user interface. Right from the start, when creating a virtual machine, we already have a couple more options than before. But unlike boxes, we do need an ISO here, since there is no default repository. The first step then is to define the directory of your saved ISOs. Now we could create a store pool with a ton of options, but these are more advanced settings. We just want to set up a basic installation, so instead just click on browse local and select your ISO. In the ideal case, Virtual Machine Manager should already detect the operating system, which basically serves as a sort of template for the configuration like minimum specs, etc. If not, you can just use a generic or closed system instead. Next we define our maximum of RAM, the amount of CPU cores and create a virtual disk. Like in boxes, this disk grows dynamically and doesn't take up the space right away. Finally, we give our VM a name and we would be done already. However, if you're running an operating system like Windows 11 or a Linux distribution with a desktop environment, I would recommend you to also select Customize Configuration before install. Because we still need to adjust some things for a buttery smooth experience. Right off the start, some operating systems like Windows 11 for example do require a secure boot and a TPM 2.0 chip. That means that if we don't want to deal with secure boot later, we can already select this option as a sort of shortcut. We also need to make sure that the TPM chip is being set to version 2.0. If you're missing some options, then you can add more hardware right here. This menu also allows you to pass through devices like your mouse or GPU, which gets then picked up by the VM as a directly connected device instead of something virtual. This is useful for configuring peripherals or gaming performance, but do remember that the connected device won't work on the host anymore while the VM is running. 
So don't pass your GPU through if you only have one. One more thing that you should definitely configure on any virtual machine which features graphics is 3D hardware acceleration, because otherwise you might experience stutters or missing animations. The first thing that we want to do is to head over to Display Spice and tick the OpenGL checkbox. Now it already tells us that something is still wrong with our configuration, so let's fix that. We want to set the listen type to none and hit apply. Then we head over to Video QXL, change it to Word.io and make sure that the checkbox shows an actual check mark. Now one more thing that I should mention, especially when installing Windows 11 is, that for some reason the current Windows boot images only work if you go into the XML and replace the section that says Hyper-V with the following configuration. Older Windows ISOs work fine though, so I have no clue what Microsoft did or if this is a QEMU issue, because Boxes doesn't have it. But anyway, that fixes it. And now you can just go ahead and install as many virtual machines as you want or need. So if you've liked this video then please make sure to show it with a like and definitely make sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Right now you can just continue and watch another video. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.